from and where I ended up getting to are two like really different places. And for a long time, I felt like I always had to choose between the two. I'm from Northeast Philly, grew up there, and um, I've always had a very in-depth, intimate relationship with SEPTA. <laughs> and it started because my mom had an embarrassing car. So um, in high school, I didn't want her to pick me up. Cause she had a white Cutlass Sierra. The whole one side of it was held together with duct tape. And had one of those fabric ceilings that like fall down and there's always like little pieces of like yellow, like foam sticking in your hair. She had a stapler she would like staple to the top. There was no AC in the car, so like on really hot days, the steering wheel would get hot so she would wear these driving gloves. <laughs> which were like flowered blue gardening gloves from the dollar store. <laughs> So after like a few, I, and I would tell her like come 15 minutes after the bell and I would like hide and like make sure no one was seeing and then like go to the car real quick. But it was still too risky so I started taking the SEPTA home. And then I started to learn, you know, the basic rules of taking the SEPTA bus. One, do not ever go to the back of the bus because if anything is going to go down on a SEPTA bus, it's going to be the back. But you don't want to be all the way in the front either because like that's suspicious. You know, like what are you trying to make pleasantries with the driver? So you got to go solid middle. You absolutely, unless it is a last resort, do not sit next to another human being. And if you accidentally make bodily contact with somebody, you better not be making eye contact with them at the same time. Stay away from anybody who has a brown paper bag. And try not to let any part of your skin touch any part of the seat at all. After high school, I got a scholarship to go to Penn in West Philly. And Thank you. And whenever I would go home to my old neighborhood from Penn, I would take the Market Frankfurt out all the way to the end of the line and then get a bus to my parents' house. And when I was coming back, I'd take the bus to the, front, the Market Frankfurt stop, take the L all the way down to 34th Street. But whenever I did this, I went through this like interior identity crisis because I didn't want to be acting like a Penn kid in Northeast Philly because some teenager on a bike that's way too small for him would probably call me a dork. And I didn't want to be acting like a Northeast Philly kid at Penn because they would look at my gray sweatpants and be like, who are you and where'd you come from? Can we come to your family's house and do like some linguistic research on the local dialect? <laughs> so at the start of my journey at the Market Market Frankfurt platform, I would, you know, be like, nobody better talk to me. But then I'd have to soften up. Like around 2nd Street, I had to like start to like change my body. And by 34th, it was all like eager scientists, like lefty, out of eyebrow, you know? <laughs> but like Clark Kent, like pulling off my Eagles hoodie to reveal my pen t-shirt underneath. And I'm trying out like, you know, pen girl phrases like that I can be ready to say like, I feel like we should like try to go to brunch sometime and try to get rid of things that I would normally say like yeah because my mom was making meatballs and stuff shells. So I'm like trying to adjust and on the way home it would be the same thing but in reverse. So I'm like water, vegan potluck, da -da -da -da, water, beef and beer. And then by the time I got to the end I was back to normal, get a soft pretzel in a brown bag from the Margaret Frankfurt station, get the bus home. So this is my routine, always going through all these changes, and one time I took the bus on the L into the city to go out with some Penn friends. Um, I was wearing a fancy going out shirt from one of my friends who we went to like some bars, we stayed over at my friend's doorman building. Um, and on the way home the next morning, I was pretty hungover. And I went through the normal identity crisis thing, but like with like mush brain, you know, like water, 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 brush, like, <laughs> to the Market Frankfurt stop at the end of the L and I got my usual soft pretzel in a brown paper bag because I thought like if I just get something in my stomach like maybe that will help because I'm starting to feel sick. I get on an almost empty 67 bus and I go to the back of the bus and I put my head on the seat in front of me and I'm just breathing like I'm in birthing class like I can make it, I can make it. It's only 15 minutes home. But SEPTA buses don't just roll smooth, you know, they lurch and they stop and they lurch and they stop. So we're lurching. And I'm starting to panic because I, I know what's going to happen and I can't get off the bus because I'm really far from home. I don't have enough money to get on another bus. So I, my mush hungover brain is trying to solve this problem and one of the cells, one of the brain cells is working and like a senior citizen like trying to be heard at a town hall meeting, it makes its point known and it's like, use the bag, the pretzel bag. <laughs> So I unclench my fingers from the brown bag and then another 
An another important point is made by this one brain cell. It goes, save the pretzel. <laughs> so I reach in, and with, uh, holding the pretzel on one hand, I hold the bag open with the other hand, and I throw up into the bag. But then the bottom of the bag rips out, and then I just, I'm, I'm going for it. I'm sick. There's a puddle on the floor of the bus. The bus is lurching, so it's trickling forward. The driver's not noticing anything. There's nobody on this bus. I lean forward, and my head is on the bus, and I realize I'm breaking all the rules. I'm the back of the bus. I have a suspicious brown paper bag, and my skin is touching the seat. So finally, I get to my stop, and I get off the bus, and I'm standing there on the corner that I've gotten off of that bus at that corner so many times in my life, and I'm wearing my fancy go-not shirt, and I'm holding a bag of puke. <laughs> and I realized that I didn't really transition. I think I didn't have to just be the septa intimate Northeast Philly kid or the hungover Ivy Leaf kid. I was both, and I was okay with that. Thank you.